Good evening, everybody. We, well, we just watched an extraordinary film, The Women's Balcony. What a tragedy when that women's section fell down. Shocking. You know, with our United Synagogue health and safety policies and guidelines, that would have been very highly unlikely. And happy birthday this week. We celebrated 150 years of the US. You know, you can picture yourself as the architecture 150 years ago. And imagine, you know, how, how are you gonna design a show? Where would you put the women's section? And we see that they're pretty much in the balconies. So, you know, I wanna begin actually with a survey. If you had the opportunity to design a show today, you know, let's, see, let's look ahead what 150 years might look like. Where would you put the women's section? You know, go ahead, put your comments below. We'll take a survey at, at, as, we, as we go along. You know, I personally came from a shul um, in North America. Where we don't really have women's balcony. It was a shul that was downstairs side by side. And so when I arrived to Norris Lee, it was a little strange for me to be up there. But it was amazing. When that Aaron HaKodesh, when, when you see those Torah scrolls with the light beaming on it, it's a view, it's a connection that I could never imagine I would have had. You know, there's a shul in Spitalfields that turned into apartments and the architecture uh, who was changing it into the apartments, uh, he, th there was the ba women's balcony there and he couldn't bring himself to destroy the women's balcony. He says, I have to do something with this. And so what he did was he created little balconies for each apartment. He changed the women's section into these apartments and it was, it, it's such a hit now, you know, and, that's what that's how vital the women's section is you know it, it, it was so important even to this architecture architect now i think what we've learned from tonight's film that there's so much more to a shul than prayer and torah reading shul is about community and i'm very honored to share tonight's discussion with rabbits and jacqueline feldman and joe gross the communities and strategic director of the united synagogue i would like now to turn to rabbits and jacqueline feldman to hear her perspective Good evening, Jacqueline. Good evening, Batya, and thank you so much. What a wonderful idea to have a chance to reflect on what we've just seen and to have a discussion about um, the, the film, The Women's Balcony. Um, what's interesting is we could very easily talk about so many different topics from this, this film. We could talk about the, the role of women generally within Judaism. We could talk about the idea of Shidduchim. We could talk about the idea of honesty and hypocrisy and all different things came up from this film. But we're gonna be focusing tonight on um, the concept of the women's section in Shul and specifically the women's balcony. What's interesting for me is growing up, I had a very different experience of Shul than I do now. Um, I grew up in Golders Green and we went to, even though there were about 10 shuls within two minutes walking distance of our house, as is the Minhag in Golders Green, we walked to a shul in Hendon um, and we were part of Diane Aaron Troy's um, shul or Stiebel as it's called. And it's very much though a shul that's run by Diane and Rebbets and Aaron Troy together. But what's interesting about that shul for me was the women's section is a very, very special place. That's the place where I used to sit and dove and watching Rebbets and Aaron Troy from when I was a very young girl, um, all the way through, guided by her, surrounded by women who are all helping in terms of providing a community, in terms of everyone's praying together, a real community sense. And what was really, really special for us is that um, at one point, the members of the shul also included Lady J. So my Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur memories are of Lady J pulling back this very thick curtain during the break on Yom Kippur and checking up on her Manu, Lord Jakobovitz, to make sure that he was okay. But for me, what was really special was this space for women was a very holy space. And even though my mother grew up in Kinloss, so I, when I went to visit my grandparents, I did see the idea of a women's balcony. It took a long time for me to get used to the idea of being very much seeing what was going on in the service because I was very used to being in a, in a bubble as a group of women. In fact, I often say my most inspirational prayer service that I've ever been a part of is when we used to do trips going to Gateshead and we used to visit the seminary there and there you would have had hundreds of girls and, and young women all singing and harmonizing together that tefillah that prayer is really an incredible experience 
But um, since we joined the United Synagogue, I really do enjoy feeling very much a part of what's going on. And, you know, I, I remember with such fond memories a year and a half ago, being able to watch my son from right the front row, um, leaning from a safer Torah and any time that he's involved in the service or to, to really be a part of it. Um, what's interesting in terms of our shul, um, Rabbi Nitbatcha, reflecting back on your question, is that actually we have the choice in our shul because it's a more modern building and, and it doesn't have fixed seating. Um, there is a women's section downstairs and a women's section upstairs, and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that afterwards. Um, but as we all know, this, this past week has been a very um, moving one for us as part of the United Synagogue in that we've finally after months been able to come back to our shuls um, and it's such an honor tonight to have Jo Gross to be able to share with us her personal reflections as well as on behalf of the United Synagogue specifically about this women's balcony or the women's space within a shul so over to you Jo. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, and thank you, Bacha, for giving me the opportunity to see the film again and to take part in this conversation. Um, and I just love the film. It's really rich in themes, as Jacqueline said, and it's really fascinating to see that community start out as one, dancing in the streets together, celebrating, and then fracture into two communities um, as the women feel deprioritized and the women form this kind of strong sisterhood. And the men, to be honest, in this film remain a bit confused as they're looking for a leader in place of their missing rabbi. And that turning point that I, I realized is when Sion tells, tells the new rabbi, uh, you know, this plan to buy the Sefer Torah, it will destroy our Kahila. And what he's saying there is our Kahila of men and women. And of course, we come full circle at the end of the film to see um, them all dancing in the street together as one community celebrating the wedding. Um, but most of all, of course, we can see that women feel very strongly that, that they have a place in the shawl and they absolutely reject the idea that it's for men only. Um, I'm also going to give a bit of a perspective on my perspective of the women's balcony. Um, and then I'll talk a bit more broadly about my role. Um, I grew up in a wonderful grand Spanish and Portuguese shul in Manchester, which still holds a very special place in my heart um, and is in no small way the reason for me doing my role now. However, my introduction to the women's balcony, and there really was one very way up high, was mixed. Um, for years, I'd gone to show with my dad. I'd sat next to him. I'd been in the heart of the action. I'd watched the men have aliyot. I'd, I was reading. I was close to the box with the top-hatted wardens. I was right in the center of things. Um, and then when the time came to go upstairs, on the one hand, I felt proud to graduate, to be considered grown up. But it also, to be honest, felt like a relegation. And this new arena in which I found myself was distant, um, it was more of a spectator's area. In fact, I used to hate arriving because you had to walk downstairs to get to your seat and everybody could see you in the women's gallery and in the, the men below. And it was a little bit of a fashion show. And we did have one active role, which was in, in the Sephardi show. We had to keep an eye out for our male relatives, including my younger brother, because if one of them got an aliyah or mitzvah, we had to stand up. Um, and the biggest drama was if something fell off the front row upstairs. And it didn't really suit me. And so when I came to London, I instinctively looked for a shawl, uh, for shawls that were on one level. And in my current shawl, um, men and women are side by side with a beautiful mechitza in between. I daven at Yavna, which is part of the Boreham Wood Nell Street shawl. Um, and for me, the real beauty, and I recognize there are many different perspectives, but the real beauty is togetherness. So when we sing, we when we're allowed to sing, <laughs> when we're back to that again, we, we sing together with one voice as one kahila. When we respond to the Amida or to prayers, we're responding in one voice. And um, when women say Kaddish, they do so along with the men, not as lone voices upstairs. Um, just as Jacqueline said, at the mitzvah day, a woman can see her son leaning um, quite close up and children can easily run between parents. And when the rabbi speaks or someone gives a Dvar Torah, they can easily look at everybody in the eye. And in particular, when a woman comes to speak at the end of the service, it doesn't feel unnatural. It's not as if she's stepping into foreign territory. It's a shared space. Um, and so personally, personal perspective, I could never go back to a balcony. And we certainly see this trend in our shore buildings. When I visit communities in, in their buildings in the week, and I really love that part of my job, I always go to the women's section. I try out different views. I drag male colleagues with me and we try out different perspectives and we can see what we can see. 
And I'm also, when I visit shuls on Shabbatot, I'm very interested to see how women uh, use the space. There are many different views on geography and shul. There are women who prefer to be upstairs. It's not just tradition, it's they like the view, best seats in the house. And there's something about the camaraderie of women together. And this crosses all age groups. There are some shuls that maintain a women's balcony and have space downstairs, as Bushy does, as Jacqueline said. And there are some shuls that most of the time women are upstairs and then every now and again, once a month, women have some space downstairs and the men make way for them. And there are other shuls that right now are debating whether to bring all their women downstairs to create more ruach and intimacy. And it's a big deal. And I mean, think about all those displaced men and I'm not being facetious, for, for a man who's been in that seat all his life and it might have belonged to his father, um, it's very, very difficult to, very painful to move out. The trend now is for shawls. New shawls tend to be built on one level. Our most recently built shawls, Ealing, Highgate, Radlett, Shenley, all on one level, and South Hampstead. And I have to admit to being incredibly moved when I went to South Hampstead for the first time, their new building. Um, the circular nature of the room, like Lincoln Square in New York, creates unity and parity. And each member of the circle, each member of the community is an equal and worthy member. I think that's what's achieved by the circle. Um, we don't build that many shawls from scratch anymore. Um, but I do think that whether we feel nostalgic for them or not, I doubt that unlike in tonight's film, we will ever oversee the building of a balcony again. Um, so Bacha, I think I'm handing back to you. And to Jacqueline is gonna join us again. Thank you, thank you both. And uh, as Jacqueline mentioned, you know, there's, there's so many aspects to this film. Um, you know, just I'll just pick up on Joe. You know, thank you so much for all the efforts um, and, and and time that you put into opening to the fact that you're able to get in, back into the show during this unprecedented times. And you know, when when you discussed when you had all those those topics, um, and I guess it's really particular to the smaller shows when you were limited with space with social distancing. Was there a question of whether or not there should be a space for the women? So this is what I'm particularly proud about over this period. So I have been leading on the reopening of shores. And yes, um, all our shores, because of social distancing, have had limited capacity. They've kind of gone to something like 20%, 15% capacity. And in small spaces, that's difficult. Um, and there were maybe some challenging conversations in some communities but all of our communities opened with space for women from the beginning. It's normally proportionate, perhaps not completely proportionate, but proportionate at least to the number of people who, who would normally attend. Um, and more than that, communities have gone to real lengths to think about how they prioritize. So for sure, Chiyuvim have a priority, and for sure if there's men saying Kaddish, but there's lots of other reasons why women might be prioritized as well. They might have a Simcha, they themselves might have a yard site, and there's many, many reasons why women would make it to uh, the top of the list as well. So um, I've been really pleased with that. There is one... Yeah. No, go ahead. It was one there was one coder to that. There's one kind of ahead of it that people were, were a bit worried. That actually, there's two things to say. First of all, not loads of women have shown up so far. So even though we've reserved the seats, women haven't showed up. And that was kind of anticipated by our women's officers who had this worry that because children can't come, so women might not come. And women quite like socializing and no generalization, but maybe they would choose not to come. And what was really worrying the women's officers is that we'd regress and that the show would become like the minion and a space for men. And um, and even worse, and this was a point made by one woman's officer, it would be filmed, let's say Kabbalah Shabbat was filmed and you could see that men had moved into the women's section to make the most of the kapat. And then women would say, oh, I see the men are in my space. I have no space there. That hasn't happened so far, but I understand the fear and we really don't want to go back there. No, absolutely. I mean, one of the things also, you know, you know, we the fact like you mentioned, you know, women saying cottage, that that's something that that's um, you know, Yeshikov to you to to allow that opportunity to to make sure that we do have a space. I mean, some you know, going back to the the uh, debate of whether we have a women's balcony or being downstairs, and I you know, encourage the audience to put in their vote. You know, we'll take a survey, a live survey as as uh, as we we continue this discussion. Um, but many feel, you know, in the women's balcony that they're spectators, you know, they, they're, they're outside, they're watching, uh, you know, a show, so to speak, um, as opposed to versus the participant who's really, you know, there, you know, personally, 
you know, like you said, you know, when you're up there, you get to really see a great view, not only the beautiful Savre Torah that I mentioned before, but you can actually see the reading. You, you, like I have, I have, I think, I'm fortunate to have the best spot in the house where I'm literally over the Bima. And one time we had a Spartic um, Torah scroll and it was stands up right. I could actually see the reading of the Torah. It was so amazing. And so you, you are in a sense, the spectator in, in, you know, when you're further out, some people feel that way versus the participant. You know, Jacqueline, I'm, I'm gonna put this question to you. Um, you know, currently there are no fans in the, in the stadiums, in the football stadiums, right? Um, is there a game? Is the game still the same game without the audience? So it's really fascinating because we, we are in such unprecedented times. You know, I remember speaking to one of the elderly members of our community who never in his life remembers the shuls ever being closed, even through the two world wars. You know, this is just something that we've never lived through before. And um, having been to shul this past Shabbat, um, I can completely understand the, first of all, the incredible amount of effort that's gone in to make it a space that people want to come to and feel safe to come to. But so much of what we love about shul isn't there because it can't be there. Um, we had a, a, a United Synagogue team virtual away day and Rabbi Liss was saying he's finally solved the issue of of people speaking in, in shul. Even if you try to speak, nobody can understand you behind their mask. And the fact that we can't sing, like, yes, it's amazing that the shuls are open again, but so much of what we love about shul is missing. Um, but what I think has been fascinating during this time is it's really given each of us an opportunity to stop and think and reflect on what our Judaism is. And one of the things that we, we often think about is the fact that we are very blessed to live with freedom of our religion. But at the end of the day, we live in a Christian country. And mm. in Christianity, the way to really connect to your, to, your, to your Christianity is through going to church. It's not the case in Judaism. And I think sometimes people get confused. You know, I, I often will meet people and they say, you know, I'm not... I'm not very good because I don't come to shul very often. And I'll say to them, well, you know, do you have a traditional Friday night? And they say, of course, of course we like candles. We have Kiddush, we have Chala. You know, when I light the candles, I say my prayers. Of course we do all of that. I have a kosher home. So, and I will say to them, then, then, you know, why are you telling, why are you almost apologizing that you're not very Jewish? Of course you're very Jewish. Our communities, we're blessed to, to live in communities made up of very diverse members but who have a very strong connection to their Judaism. And what we've all had to do over these past few months is to really stop and step back and think about what it is that's important to us. And if prayer was part of that, then we've found a way to have prayer in our own spaces. So yes, sitting in shul now with a mask on and not being able to you know, sing in, in in as we usually would, and to join in in the, with the same exuberance as we normally would is challenging. But actually, for me to go to shul on a Shabbat morning and to be able to say all the prayers was was quite new for me because normally I'd have conversations and people coming up to me or welcoming people or showing people the place. We can't do any of that, and and we miss that. But maybe we have to look at at our own relationship to what we're doing in the shul and, and why it is that we're there. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, when, when, when I meet people, um, you know, they, you know, uh, as a relatively new to, 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 um, to London, they say, oh, you don't know me. I'm, I'm not a regular at shul. You know, I don't really, you know, do that. I said, you know what? My answer is God is everywhere, right? We tell this, <laughs> we sing this song, Hashem is here, Hashem is there. And that's, and that's, and that's the truth. And like you said, during this, um, you know, COVID period where we where we didn't have a show, we didn't have a building to go to, yet we still had a community. And it was really important to, to be able to connect to that. And we know that, uh, you know, Joe, you, the United Synagogue just recently created this new, this new role for women, the, the women's officer role that plays in a, a, a very a vital uh, role in, in with the show. And what is it? Can you tell us a little bit about that? What, what, do you, what is um, the purpose of that role? Yeah, so it's um it's a joint project, or it was a joint initiative of the Office of the Chief Rabbi and the United Synagogue, and I'm really pleased that we, I think we're about 18 months in, um, and it's been very successful. 
the, the aim of the women's officers is to, um, at the highest level, their honorary officers, is to give consideration to women's engagement, to constantly have at the forefront of their mind women's engagement and inclusion in community life. And that could be in services, uh, or it could be elsewhere in other, in, in programmatically as well. And they're part of the decision-making team. So um, it should be, when this works successfully, that those women's officers are part of community planning, strategic planning, investment decisions, they're on serv services committees, they're part of recruitment, and all of that is done with the view, with, with the view that they are representing the women in their community. And let's be honest, there's no one view. It is very difficult to represent all the women in your community and they all have very different views and that's not easy. But the, the key is that, that um, particularly anything related to services has traditionally been a very male domain. And if half the people or just under half the people in the room are women, then we must be giving consideration to their experience of the service too. And we now have this incredible cohort of women who I uh, share a lovely WhatsApp space with, who are constantly full of ideas of what they can do next in their communities and inspire each other. And in fact, the greatest um, kind of example of that was around the Yamun Naraim last year, where they just listed all the things that they had achieved from running in every shawl, there were debates and learning programs. There were booklets written by women. There was um, a second Kol Nidre because that was put on for women. There were women's Halal in over Sukkot. There, there was a whole range of um, things that were put on. And um, and even down to, and this is quite important to me, the fact that in one shul that a woman gave the Kol Nidre a period, right? So that it, it, it's just, um, it, it's so that just that we're hearing women's voices in shul, yeah. Right. No, and, and we saw that in the film, right? I mean, clearly the the women felt that their voice wasn't part, wasn't even heard of, with the planning of you know what do you mean you built the show without discussing it with us? You know how did you manage to do that? And the fact that they also you know couldn't imagine a show without a women's section. They they walked in there and was were devastated. How could how could this is not a show? And we know that it always existed, right? Even at the times of the temple, they had the Ezos Nashim. We have that concept. So, so you know, the woman's role um, with a shul is so imperative. It's so um, vital to 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 uh, to be able to to continue to exist. Um, and, and we know that you know, like you like you mentioned, Jacqueline, that the shul, while it does play a significant role, it's it's not really the central, uh, in a sense, like like the, like the like Christianity. So, how can a woman connect with with prayer, with Torah? You know, being that she has a different role. Um, than the men with specifically with the with the shul services. Yeah, so I think that it, it's something that's very personal, actually, and each woman will have a very personal approach. I think, Joe, you really made me smile, actually, when you spoke about this idea of our wonderful women's officers trying to represent the, the views of the people in the women in the community, because there are so many different diverse opinions. And, you know, I really have to say kola kavod to these women who are really trying to hear and be there for everyone and, and not to put forward their own personal agenda, because I think that's really, really important that it needs to be a space that everyone feels comfortable in. But the interesting thing is that we must make sure that we separate between um, counting for a minion or leading the minion or reading from the Torah to the idea of communal prayer and, and the idea of us all being part of that prayer. But as you said so beautifully in the temple that Ezra Nashim was a very important part of the temple and you know the women's place was always there. I think this idea of which we saw in the film of trying to whitewash out women from Judaism is it's ludicrous. Right. It's it just doesn't fit with with our Yiddishkeit. It's just not a part of how we work. You know, I was just reflecting on both in last week's parasha and in this week's coming parasha. We talk about the Benot Salavchad, who are these powerhouse women. You know, when we look at those Sephardi women in the women's balcony, don't mess with them. Those were the Benot Salavchad. Like there was something they had an issue with in the most respectful way possible, with tremendous you know, appreciation for Moshe's authority and doing it through completely the right way of doing things. They brought about change. But as well, at the same time, and I think specifically within our communities, we always need to be conscious of what people are comfortable with. And for me, what's fascinating, because we now have a, a downstairs section and an upstairs section, is there are some women that hate 
being upstairs because they feel out of it. They feel like they can't they can't see. But so you described this amazing view that you had. In Arshul, it's not like that. You can't really see what's going on from quite a lot of the upstairs part. It's a very small upstairs. But I should um, say that not everybody could see from right. From the, from the, yeah, no, there's definitely there. It's not a it's not an ideal situation right. and and i thought you know that, that that's how everyone felt everyone would prefer to sit downstairs but yet as i said everyone has different opinions there are some women who hate sitting behind a machitza and they find that really uncomfortable and they'd much rather be upstairs and and see everything that's going on but i think the important thing is um if we look back in our history this idea of um davening in a shul is is relatively modern Right, both Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, they stopped and they prayed wherever they were. Wow. And at the end of the at the end of the day, I think the main thing we really need to understand is that at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is we're trying to have a relationship with Hashem. That's what prayer is. And each one of us is going to do that in a completely different way, whether that's upstairs whether that's downstairs, whether that's at home, whether that's on a walk in the park, each one of us needs to find a way to feel a connection with Hashem. That's what prayer really is about. And I think especially with masks and with all the things that we have going on right now, you know, there's plenty of people who aren't coming back to shore right now because they really feel very anxious. And I think that's okay. Nobody's meant to come back if they're not comfortable. So we have to really appreciate that Every person can still have that incredible relationship with Hashem and connection to him from whatever way they feel comfortable with. And one of the things, Joe, actually, that I was laughing about when you said you, we won't we won't be going back to the idea of building a balcony. Actually, I think it might have been even our women's officer said that one of the things we've spoken about is if there is too many women to fit upstairs, there is a possibility we'd have a section for women downstairs and the men would go upstairs. And, you know, she was saying that it would be interesting for them to see how difficult it is to follow what's going on when you're upstairs. And I think that what you said, Joe, which is so important, is we each need to stop and put ourselves in the other's shoe. Whether that's the people who love to sit behind the machitza, whether that's the people who love to sit upstairs, whether that's the men in the men's section, because at the end of the day, as you said so beautifully, it's about us all coming together as a community. And that really is what our shuls are about. It's our communities. And we've had to do that for so many months without our shuls. But now, actually, we've got a chance to do that in so many ways, right? We're doing it virtually and, and through our shuls as well. So it's almost like we've got these multiple dimensions to our shul to bring us all together. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that. Joe, did you want to respond? Um, no, only to touch on that very last point about the virtual, because I think we would be, it would be a shame not to touch on that, given that we are meeting virtually and that there's really been this explosion of virtual programming and really, and the fact that we've had the online davening has meant for many, when many women have commented that it's been more accessible than ever, accessible because they can access to feel davening from their home, um, accessible because they're, for some women, closer to, they feel closer uh, to, to the action. I myself enjoy the Kabbalat Shabbat as I'm finishing off my last minute Shabbat cooking because I'm not quite ready. But that turns actually that Shabbat cooking, which is normally a bit stressful and grumpy, into a bit of a holy experience. So it's been a real boon, actually, and I, I'm sure we'll, it will continue. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, just bringing it, you know, to, to the end to the discussion, I know it's late, but, you know, I, Jacqueline, you mentioned the the key to women um, the, the, is their uniqueness. You know, the spe the special thing about women is that the fact that there's there each of them are unique. Each of them, you know, when I meet a bat mitzvah girl, I always say, you know, this is about you. How do you want to? How do you want to be able to celebrate your this special milestone? And you can do whatever you want, right? In a sense, the boys, we know they're going to do their laning, they're going to do their haftorah, but the the girls, you know, they have uh, it's pretty much an you know open. Um, op different opportunities for them, and and that's and that's the beauty of being a woman. And I think, um, like you said, we have to be able to accommodate to to each of, to, to the diversity of it. And so, um, thank you both uh, for joining us uh, for t tonight. It was really an honor and um, an, an amazing, um, a really really special film um, to show the the power of women and and their place that that definitely a place um, for women in the shul and the community and thank you joe for all the work that you do with the united synagogue um and, and ensuring that that we continue to have that that space thank you right. thank you for the opportunity thank you very very much thank okay, you have a good evening really thank you. good night thank you good night, good night.